Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. In this episode, I want to go over some product updates, including the Vid HD from Blue Shift, the Kaboo HK SD floppy drive, and finally the Applesauce disk imager from John Morris. So let's get started. update I want to talk about is from John Brooks and this is the vidhd and he has a new firmware available for that. You can find details of the update on the Call Apple website. The firmware fixes some problems with sync especially on displays that are by default 1440p as long as they support 1920 then sync should now work properly. It also fixes a few problems with some mouse text and there's also some improvements to Pascal and basic support. To install the firmware update, you simply need to download the firmware from the Call Apple website. Once you have it downloaded, you want to write the firmware to a micro SD card and then put that into the vidhd card. We've got the micro SD with the new firmware installed in the vidhd card and put it back into slot 3. So now we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the monitor and then turn on the Apple IIe. Okay, so there's the boot for the Apple IIe, so that looked good. It took a little bit longer than normal, presumably because it was flashing the firmware. So with the vidHD, one thing I didn't show last time was you can actually have much higher resolutions for basic. So for example, in addition to the 40 and 80 column, you can also have an 80 by 45, a 120 by 67, or a 240 by 135 mode. So let's do a poke 49163,0 to disable the Apple 80 column firmware. And then we'll do a PR number three to switch to the cards mode. And then finally, we should be able to use the escape key to get to different modes. So if we hit escape four, now we're in 40 column mode. So let's just do a simple program here. We can hit escape eight and now we're in 80 column. If we hit escape one, now we're in extended 80 by 45 mode. So you can see with this mode, the width of the characters is very similar to 40 column mode, but now we have 45 lines on the screen instead of just 24. So this is actually really nice because you can get a really long screen here for running programs. We can also hit escape two, and now we're in 120 by 67 mode. And finally we can hit escape three, and now we're in teeny tiny 240 by 135 mode. So this is actually amazing. The resolution is extremely good. I can still read that from here. So let's change our program here slightly so we can actually see the entire thing. And so you can see there we're using all 240 columns across the screen. And it's interesting that the refresh rate uh, it's probably the same as it actually is for say 40 or 80 column, but it just looks a lot slower just because the Apple's having to fill so much more. So this is pretty amazing that John Brooks has managed to get BASIC to respond properly to 240 columns. And like he said in the firmware update, you can actually use the escape ABCD to actually move around the screen in 240 columns. So if you actually had a AppleSoft program, you'd be able to edit it in 240. Now, not everything is going to respond properly to this, and obviously games and things like that aren't going to work so well in 240 column mode, but just as a text editor or a program editor, this would be fantastic. The firmware updated successfully for the vidHD card and fixed some bugs, especially with syncing up to unusual 1080p monitors. And then it also fixed some issues with BASIC and Pascal as well. So I would say if you have a vidHD card, it's well worth the upgrade. And just head on over to Call Apple's website to get that. 
The next update is for the Kaboo HK SD floppy drive. My Kaboo HKW drive is currently at version 0.47, and if you recall from my earlier video, this was the one that added support for disk DO and PO files. There's been several versions since then. So version 0.5 added support for writing out DSK DOPO and also added support for the latest WAS format, which is version 2.0. And then finally, a much needed feature, which is the auto boot to the last selected image. So you don't have to select it every time you boot up. Then following on that, there was another version 0.51, but the biggest update is probably this version 0.99, which is still in beta. This actually adds support for smart port. And so this will allow you to boot up 32 megabyte images in either 2MG or HDV format. To load the new firmware onto the W drive, you simply take the SD card and download the wdrive.bin file and then reinsert it into the W drive and reboot your Apple II. When I first tried it, I couldn't get the smart port to work for disk images. I contacted Eric Lung on Facebook, who got in touch with Kaboo, and they sent me version 0.99b of the firmware. So we're going to go ahead and try that now. To reset the firmware, we hold down the left and the middle button, and then we hit the reset button on the side. Let go of the reset, and it says W drive loader release key. And once we release, it says loading image. And now it says 0.99B. So let's go ahead and we'll scroll down now to say pitch dark dot 2MG. We'll hit the middle button to select that. All right, so let's go ahead and boot up now with the pitch dark image and we'll see if this works. So it says soft SP is loading, comes up, there's that. So it actually booted. Now I can't actually run this on this computer because I don't have enough memory, but you can see that we booted into the smart port drive and so you used to not be able to boot smart port images on a disk 2 controller card, but now with Kaboo's W drive, you can do that. So with the new beta version of the firmware, which isn't actually out yet, you can now boot smart port images on a 2 plus, a 2E, a 2C, and a 2GS. You can use either 2MG or HDV files, and then you can also boot regular DSK, DO, PO, or WAS files. So let's hope that Kaboo actually gets the firmware out there soon and that they get the W drive back in stock uh, because it's a fantastic product. The final update is to the Applesauce disk imager from John Morris. And for this update, you'll have to buy a replacement board. And I'll have the link in the show notes to John Morris's website where you can get that. And then you can also download the latest version of the Applesauce software. In November, John Morris released an updated version of his PCB. And so if you've bought a new Applesauce since then, then it'll have the new board in it. If you bought one earlier, then you can go ahead and order a replacement board for just $20. If you're uncomfortable doing the replacement yourself, you can actually mail your Applesauce unit back to John Morris, and he's offered to do the replacement at no additional charge. So what's the difference? On the new board, the voltage regulators are actually a lot beefier, which should help it to work better with especially 3.5 inch drives, which tend to suck a lot of power. I also downloaded the latest version of the Applesauce software. So let's go ahead and run that now. And when you run this, it'll actually update the firmware within the Applesauce unit itself. So it says Applesauce firmware needs an update and we can go ahead and update it. Now that our Applesauce is up and running, we can go ahead and test it. So there's been a few changes to the user interface. It's actually a lot cleaner now. It's divided up into just a couple sections. There's the fast imager, which creates the WAS format. You can also create .dsk, DO, or PO. There's the flux imager, which is for copy protected disks or disks where you want to preserve all of the bits. And then finally, there's a disk writer, which allows you to write disk images back out onto a floppy disk. The diagnostics tools has been upgraded to now have different sections so you can test things like the power, reading, writing, head tracking, sync sensor, write protect, etc. And then finally you can also get information as usual on your MC3470 chip that's inside your disk 2 drive. Let's go ahead and image a disk just to make sure everything's working properly. So I've got a cracked version of Copy 2 Plus here which I thought would be appropriate. So we'll just put that in and we will hit image disk. 
and the green indicates that the read for that particular track and sector was good and occasionally you can see it flashing blue where it actually had to retry but it automatically does that so it looks like everything's good so we can go ahead and we can save this copy to plus and we'll save this as a dot was and then now that we've done that we should be able to open that up and try it out copy to plus dot was and we'll go ahead and boot that and so this is virtual 2 which has also been upgraded to now handle the was file format and so as you can see everything boots up properly and we have a good copy of copy 2 plus so i'd highly recommend if you already have an applesauce definitely go ahead and get the upgrade to the board. It's only $20. If you don't have an applesauce unit yet, I would recommend getting one. If you have a bunch of floppies or you have some copy protected floppies, it's definitely worth getting an applesauce. As you can see, it's really fast to image disks and you can also image at the flux level in case you wanna preserve something at that level. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the new features of the vidHD the W drive from Kabu HK and the applesauce from John Morris. If you have any of these items, it's well worth upgrading because of all the new features. And hopefully these hardware and software developers will continue to make improvements in the future to their products. I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you're not currently a supporter, but you'd like to help me out, there's a link in the show notes. And also I'd ask you to please hit the subscribe button so other people can find this podcast. Once again, Thanks for watching.